right, welcome back to On the Ball, the video podcast series from the Vanderbilt Sports and Society Initiative. I'm Andrew Marinus, and I am really excited to have our guest Megan Chopra with us today, um, joining from Washington, D.C. And Megan, I think you're probably the youngest guest that we have had on the um, show. And so first of all, I just want to say I admired you for getting in touch in, in the first place to let me know about your new book which is called Redefining the Field, The Triumphs and Tribulations of Women in Sports, 30 Interviews with Women in the Sports Industry. Um, so Megan, thank you so much for joining the show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so um, got a lot of questions. want to know a little bit about you and, and about the book. Um, let's start with you. So you go to Sidwell Friends uh, High School in Washington, D.C., one of the best high schools in the country. Um, I, I told you before I hit record here, I actually got waitlisted there. Um, I, I did really bad on my interview. <laughs> I remember they, they said, you know, take off your coat and relax. And I was so nervous. I never even took off my winter jacket when I was there uh, for my interview. But what's it like being a, a student at Sidwell? I know that's a place where you've got sons and daughters of, of presidents and diplomats and Congress people. Um, what's it like being a student there every day? Yeah, I mean, um, it's definitely many times a very like challenging um, academic environment, but I think that there's so many great teachers and great students that it's just a really good learning opportunity and a really, you know, um, it's, a, it's an environment with very positive values. Um, a lot of our education is centered around kind of community centered and social justice work. Um, we get to listen to a lot of cool speakers in addition to having you know, just the normal classes. So yeah, I, I really enjoy it. It's a, it's a great school. And you live in Potomac, Maryland now, uh, Montgomery County outside of DC. Is that where you grew up? Yes. I've, I've been here my whole life. Yes. Okay. And I saw that you're a, a Miami Dolphins fan. I wondered how, yeah. how that came to be. Um, just kind of random. I think I've, I've liked the Dolphins since I was like four years old. Um, I have no reason behind that. I guess I just really liked Miami at the time. And I think I kind of stuck with it. <laughs> All right. Um, so I received an email from you basically out of the blue. We don't know each other already. Um, letting me know that you had a new book and I'm an author as well. And I know how that goes, you know, trying to um, promote one's book. You're looking for, um, you know, opportunities with in venues that have expressed an interest in the type of things you're writing about. And certainly uh, this topic of women in sports is really interesting to me in my capacity at the Sports and Society Initiative here at Vanderbilt, but also uh, as an author, I wrote a book about the first U.S. women's Olympic basketball team that played at the 1976 Olympics in Montreal, a book for kids about Maya Moore. Um, and I know that you have an interest in criminal justice and reentry. Um, and that book is about her, the fact that she quit playing WNBA to help free an innocent man from prison, you know? Um, so I think we share a lot in common. Um, was this idea for the book, and you're a high school senior, right? So I assume you wrote this maybe when you were a junior or the summer before your senior year, I don't know, but like, was this a class assignment? Was this just something you wanted to do and it's completely unrelated to school? Well, what are the roots of this project? Yeah, definitely. So as as I kind of shared before, I've always had like an interest in football, watching the Dolphins, but also, you know, thinking about how I could actually be involved in the sport. And so um, going into my freshman year of high school, um, I wanted to be involved with my high school football team at Sidwell, but I wasn't too sure about playing. So I joined as a became like the manager and kind of strategic analyst for the team. And it was a really incredible experience for me, but it was also kind of new being part of a team that was kind of all guys, very male dominated. So that encouraged me to want to reach out to um, other girls who maybe wanted to join underrepresented fields, but didn't see a pathway for them. And so, yes, this was um, very much like on my own. It was not involved through school. So I kind of began it during my sophomore year and it's actually took about two years to complete kind of all different stages and processes of the book, like first conducting the interviews and then compiling them, um, putting them together into the book and, and publishing. Yeah, it, it took about my um, sophomore and junior year. Yeah, I can relate to that. My first book took me eight years to write. Um, now they take about a year and a half or, or two years. <laughs> So, yeah, you had this this interest, a personal interest, but also recognizing you weren't alone. Um, I guess you could have dealt with that in a lot of different ways. Uh, you could have just called people and asked for advice for yourself, you know, or 
um, the idea of writing a book as a high school student, you know, not too common. Like what gave you the confidence that this was or in the, uh, the direction that this is the way you wanted to go? I think that listening to kind of like these inspiring women that I was able to talk to, I knew that like their words could actually help so many other people. And I think part of what I really hoped to do through the book was not only encourage more women to join the sports industry or whatever respect their respective industries that they're interested in, but also to highlight these incredible women that I was speaking to that maybe I thought, you know, not many people knew about, but were doing so much to kind of push the sports industry forward. So the book features interviews with 30 women, a variety of roles in sports from, you know, coaching to administrators of teams to executives in the sports gambling industry, really across the board. How did you go about um, identifying the women that you were interested in speaking to for the book? Yeah, I think just really trying to cover all the bases of all different sports, all different positions within sports, just doing research, um, trying to reach out to all these women. I mean, I probably I ended up with 30 interviews, but I probably reached out to a couple hundred women to actually get 30 to uh, have the time to speak with me. But um, yeah, trying to just really show a diverse variety of the different women in different positions within the sports industry. Yeah. Um, I can imagine that you had to contact a lot more than we're willing to talk. Uh, how did you go about contacting them? Um, you know, even for established authors or journalists, sometimes it's hard to get people to sit down for an interview. Um, you're a high school student and in some ways I'm sure that worked for you, like that they're willing to give the time to a young person looking to come up in the industry In other ways it might've worked against you that you didn't have a track record. They didn't know who you were. Like, like what was that process like for you? Yeah, um, just reaching out through whatever emails I could find on the internet, whatever social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, and kind of in my message, sharing what I thought was so inspirational about them, but also sharing a little bit about my story, hopefully, you know, seeing if they could connect in any way. I'm trying to, I guess, also tell them my goal of what I was trying to do with the book. Um, I think a combination of having those three things led me to have a pretty decent response rate. You're the most excited when when you got like an email back or a message back on LinkedIn that they said yes they wanted to do it. Uh, what were Um, some of the people that you were like, wow, they really do want to do it. This is awesome. yeah, I mean, I think getting the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers is probably, I was, I was pretty shocked about getting a response from Jeannie Buss. Um, and then she also, she was like, um, proposed a time for like the next day. So I was, I was a little stressed and like, yeah, kind of crazy knowing I had to like speak with her like the next morning, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, um, I, I was. I, you've got Jeannie Buss's name on the cover of the book. She's a, definitely a big name. Um, how did you go about? In that case, you only had a day, I guess, to do the research. But um, did you research these women that you contacted before, or once you heard back from them that they wanted to do it? Did you go back and do more to prepare your questions? Because I feel like your questions in the book are really interesting. Um, in some cases, there are similar questions that you're asking everybody. But in other cases, you know, it's tailored to that person's experience and their role with whatever organization they're in. So um, I think it would be helpful for especially for young writers uh, or students who are doing research papers, you know, to understand um, the research that you did even before conducting the interviews. No, definitely. Yeah, I think the research that I did before kind of reaching out was pretty minimal. But after I got a response and rescheduled an interview, I, I definitely dive deep into doing as much research as I could to, as you said, to kind of tailor the questions to, you know, their specific position, their specific journey, and um, also to write the bios that were um, in the book in each chapter. So, yeah, I think that um, doing that research, I think, really impressed the people that I was interviewing and kind of made them want to, you know, share more about their journeys. And, and it also um, was able to provide, you know, kind of more detailed information, but also, Um, I did I, at the end of each interview, I asked that same question about um, what message do you hope your story tells young girls? So I also wanted to have that continuity bef throughout the whole book of ha having a response from each of them to that question. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people listening are, 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 are hoping that I'll ask you, well, who are some of the other women that you talked to? So we've mentioned Jeannie Buss, um, either by name or the type of position that they have in sports. Can you just give us a sense of 
some of the other people that are featured in the book. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think on the cover, it also mentions Amy Howie, who's the CEO of FanDuel, um, Tamika Tremaglia, who's the former executive director of the um, National Basketball Players Association, um, Allison Locks, who's the director of the business development and innovation at ESPN. Um, there's a lot of women players, coaches, and owners of um, women's football teams, um, professional football teams, um, There's a lot more um, really focusing on, I'd say, marketing, social media, innovation, um, business, coaching, journalism, um, social justice. So co covering all those fields. But yeah, those are a couple of names. Okay. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, they come from a, a diverse range of roles within sports. But even with that diversity, were there certain common themes that you felt like emerged either in how these women um, beat the odds in a male dominated industry and arrived at the positions that they have now or the uh, themes in the terms of the advice that they were giving to young girls? Yeah, I think one thing was that they always mentioned was kind of, though maybe it might be hard at times you're going to face adversity, it's always worth it to pursue your passions. And I think one thing that I noticed throughout a lot of the interviews is not many of them did not imagine that they'd end up where they are in their position doing what they're doing. So I think that kind of being open to what the future can hold for you. Um, I mean, a lot of them didn't even have an interest in sports, but kind of just ended up in the sports industry and ended up loving it. So I think um, kind of, yeah, being open to what the future and possibilities will bring. I mean, the social kind of social media marketing innovation industries um, within sports probably weren't even a thing 20, 30 years ago. They're very new. So I think that the future holds so many um, future possibilities. So yeah, just continue to keep your eyes open and, and see how, you know, you can con contribute to sports in the future. It seems like there's a um, two potential paths for women in sports, you know, um, breaking barriers and, and working, you know, like you mentioned, you have a goal maybe of being an NFL coach or general manager. Um, you see more women on the sidelines in the NFL right now um, as coaches or in Major League Baseball as general managers. Right. And um, so there's the path of of breaking barriers and being a, a, a high ranking woman in men's sports. And then right now, you know, as you address in the book, in some ways, there's never been more attention for women's sports, Mm -hmm. you know, and the roles that women could and should have, you know, within the women's sports industry. Um, what did you learn about the paths and the decisions and the possibilities, the distinctions for women who are choosing one direction uh, over the other? I know some feel very strongly that they want to coach in the WNBA, not be in the NBA, you know, because they want to help build women's sports. Others feel it's important to show that women can do anything in men's sports that a man can do. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, I think even just not even through the book, but like watching, um, you know, women's college basketball nowadays, we're seeing so much more attention given to women's sports. And, and that's so important. I think the main difference is that we we see is that many times we think that men can lead and coach women's teams. We don't see that women are able to coach and lead men's teams. And I think that's why, you know, looking at Jeannie Buss, who is the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers, that's so special. But I, I think that um, talking to many of the women in the book, they didn't really want to see a difference in whether they could coach for men's and women's. I think they both just wanted, they wanted to keep their options open and, and they wanted to be able to be recognized for their ability to be part of both men's and, and women's leagues. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one thing I thought was interesting, I was doing a little research on you before the interview, and I saw you wrote an article for, I believe, the Sidwell paper um, about sports gambling and teenagers, you know, and that um, the, the addiction possibilities there, the fact that, you know, teens aren't even supposed to be able to access these online gambling sites, right, until you're uh, 21 years old. And yet, you really see these companies marketing towards young people, um, towards minority communities, um, these gambling companies aren't losing money. You know, um, you interviewed a woman who's a high ranking executive with FanDuel. I mean, she talked about wanting to increase participation of women within the sports gambling business uh, and betting on women's sports. Like, 
you see women succeeding in an industry and in, that um that men have been in the past and yet it's a it's an industry that's not always healthy for people like how'd you come away from that interview Yeah, I mean, I think that the reality is that sports betting does exist. Um, I know my brother, like, he, he loves sports betting. So I think that, um, I mean, I, I think that that's a good question. I'd say that, you know, I, I think that this, I think, again, we have to realize sports betting exists, but again, be able to, you know, tailor it again so our marketing is towards older people. We're not, you know, we recognize the detriments that can it can have to kids. Um, but, you know, for adults, people who are kind of able to handle it, everyone being able to, you know, have an opportunity sports bet, women, people of color, et cetera. I think I think that's important. Um, I mean, FanDuel is, is a big company. It's a, you know, well-used um, platform. So I think that, you know, having the perspective of Amy Howie and her job is is it is important and cool How did you get the book published? it's self-published um yeah so i just published it on amazon um yeah it was a it's a pretty easy process Was it? I know because I hear from a lot of people that are interested in self-publishing a book. I, I feel like it's getting easier and easier. Um, the distribution is not like it used to be. It's not like you had to buy, I imagine, thousands of copies, keep them in your garage, right? People are buying them, they're printed on demand. And um, is that how it's working? Have you had... like uh, a launch event at Sidwell or there in DC. And, um, you know, what was it like when the, when you, when you can hold the book in your hand, I know that is such a great feeling. What was that like for you? Yeah, they they are printed on demand. I I bought a couple copies as soon as it got published. Uh, finally on the website, and I didn't have a launch event. Um, more just trying to spread the word, going on um, you know, local news channels, reaching out to friends, family, um, you know, on social media, stuff like that. Have you heard from readers, particularly girls your age, um, what type of uh, feedback have you gotten about um, what you've done? Because I know that your mission here is to um, help other people. And have you have you felt that? Yeah, I've gotten positive feedback, um, especially being able to send copies to the 30 um, women who are featured. I, I know they were really happy to see it published and, um, you know, see their words in the in the hands of so many other young girls. But, um, yeah, I, I've seen um, girls around the world um, buying it now and um, I've gotten positive feedback. Um, I mean, again, I can't I can't speak to how it'll play into the future of these girls and their trajectory and what they want to do. But yeah, I think that um, they've been very inspired by these words. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy about it, hopefully to continue being able to spread it to more people. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's something where you might not even hear for 10 or 20 years when someone's in a position to give an interview about like how they arrived where they did. And they might mention that they read this book when they were a kid, you know, and it, and it had an influence on them the rest of their life. Um, now, you mentioned that is this still the case you'd like to work in the NFL someday as a coach or a general manager? Like what what what's uh, on the horizon for you? What are you thinking about in terms of It, of college is is the world of sports a factor in where you're thinking about where you want to go or what your career might be Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, um, I kind of have these two differentiating passions. One is working in criminal justice reform and with incarcerated individuals and also within sports. I think that being involved in the NFL and football, I think, has been a dream of mine since I was very, very young. So I'm hoping that will always continue to be a possibility or football will still be um, in my life somehow. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm grappling with those two passions in terms of what I want to do in the future. Are you looking at Bandy? Um, yeah, I am. I am. All right. Well, if you end up here, you got to uh, work in the sports and society initiative with me. I will I'd love definitely. to love to have you. Um, one other thing I want to mention is that um, proceeds from the book are benefiting the Women's Sports Foundation. Can you tell us about um, why you wanted that to be a piece of this? And um, for those who aren't familiar, like what does the Women's Sports Foundation
So um, yeah, having those donations um, and through the proceeds was really important to me. Um, the Women's Sports Foundation is a um, foundation also dedicated towards inspiring women in sports. It was founded by Billie Jean King. Um, and so they reach girls throughout the country through different programming um, and events and, and help um, provide resources and support to girls in, in the sports industry. Um, I want to go back to, to some of the uh, subjects of the book. And I, I really don't like it when people ask me, like, what surprised you when you were doing the research for your book? Because in some ways, I feel like everything should surprise you. You know, you, sh you shouldn't go in with too many preconceived notions. But was there any um, advice that you received that was really different than what other people were saying or was counterintuitive to what, you know, you yourself uh, believed about? what these women might say, or were there any especially bizarre pathways into the sports world uh, by some of the women you interviewed? Things that really stand out as different from the other 30 interviews? Yeah, I think that two things, like one being kind of, as I mentioned earlier, that so many of them didn't even didn't even really have an interest in sports or play sports growing up, but still ended up in the sports industry. And that and then I think that something that was very interesting was that so many of these women, even though they've, you know, had these remarkable achievements and have broken barriers, they don't really want to be remembered for the fact that they were the first woman to do this or the first woman to do that, but that they want to be remembered or um, credited for kind of the, the actual success they had. Um, yeah, I think that I saw a pattern of a lot of women going from like the law and consulting industry into sports. Um, that was something that I guess I hadn't expected. And that I think the third piece of advice that, you know, kind of surprised me in a way was that a lot of them said not to be too kind of like narrow minded in terms of like what you want to do like if you want to go into sports that doesn't mean that you have to study like sports management or sports analytics in college you can study anything and um you know eventually you'll be able to get into the sports industry so i think the fact that they didn't s seem to be so you know career goal oriented but instead kind of just let things flow and open up more possibilities and opportunities for yourself was was something that I noticed in a lot of the interviews and maybe something that I didn't necessarily expect. Yeah, very interesting. I was a history major in college and now I work in sports. Yeah, exactly. Um so For people who are interested in uh, the book, like how can they find it? How can they buy it? And are there other places where they can follow your work or is, you know, purchasing the book uh, the best and only uh, way to keep track of you? Because I think people are going to be watching this and realizing that you're going to be a player in the sports industry uh, in the future if you'd like to be. And I know that a lot of um, parents would like to give this book as a, as a gift to the um To their kids. Um, I think I could see this being used in high school and college classrooms. Um, I feel like this could be a, a really valuable book for a lot of people who are interested in working in sports. So how can people um, follow you and buy the book? Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So yeah, the book is available on Amazon, um, Redefining the Field um, by Megan Chopra. I search that up, it'll, it should come up. All the proceeds are donated as we discussed. Um, in terms of following me, um, feel free to, you know, connect with me on like LinkedIn. Um, it's just Megan Chopra. Follow on Instagram. Um, you can email me at meganchopra777 at gmail.com. And um, at, at, I'm happy If you're now you're hosting an event for girls or you want it for a classroom or stuff, I'm happy to provide free copies as well if if financing is an issue. So yeah, feel free to reach out in in any way. Oh, that's great. Well, again, Megan, congratulations on a great achievement. Uh, just interviewing 30 women for your own uh, personal knowledge and gaining those insights and making those connections is going to be really valuable for you. But sharing all of these uh, lessons with others is, you know, potentially going to change a lot of people's lives. So that's a big deal. And uh, congrats on that. Good luck with the rest of uh, the academic year at Sidwell. Good luck with your college applications and then the work that you're doing uh, in social justice and um, uh, criminal justice reform in DC, really important work. Uh, you're a, a really inspiring person. So thank you for joining the show. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thanks again. Thank you so much.